Uh, we got the world report earlier, uh, actually like last week, the week has just flown by already that the, uh, that there was, uh, discussions about Andre Drummond on both sides. Ownership was involved, uh, for sending Andre Drummond to the Atlanta Hawks. Uh, first things first, I want to ask you how good of a fit is, is Andre in Atlanta and how poor has the center situation been in Atlanta that they think that uh, Andre Drummond can be like an upgrade there? I mean, Alex Len is like by far the Hawks best center. And he was not like, he's good, but he's, he's a, a solid backup center, you know, and he's making four and a half million dollars and he's, you know, that's about right for what he brings to the table, you know? So that's, that's what they're sort of working with. And they're, trying to figure out things like like tonight as we record this they're going to start john collins at center he's you know 610 with a 610 wingspan like not a true center more of a, a small ball kind of look with that you know damian jones was in the rotation and was out of the rotation bruno fernando's a rookie and he's got some you know some upside but of course he's still just a rookie so you know this center their center rotation in atlanta is as bad as it is anywhere in the league and so you know from that perspective drummond would be a, a massive upgrade just being what he is like whether you are in you know whether you really like him or you don't he would be just a huge upgrade for for these hawks well specifically like for the team the hawks are trying to build i guess like would andre be a fit for that type of team that's a more open question they certainly don't have like the center of the future unless bruno is going to be that guy and that you know it's possible but you know he was a second round he's a second round pick like who knows you know where fernando is going to go long term if he's you know, if, if Bruno's not going to be that guy or they don't know, I mean, I can't imagine they know whether he's going to be that guy at this point or not. I don't think, and they don't think that Collins is going to be that guy. You know, I don't think they uh, uh, assess his skill set as being the center of the future, the guy you can start and play, you know, 35 minutes a game at center. I, I think that they, you know, eventually his, his athleticism is going to wane at some point. You know, certainly it's not like on the horizon or anything, but if you're building around John Collins at center long term, he's not going to be able to jump and touch the top of the backboard for the rest of his life. Like, that's just not the way that works. And so, you know, 6'10", you know, short arms for a 6'10 guy, not the best defensive instincts. Like, he gets cooked in pick and roll pretty much all the time. Like, he's, he's very raw in that sense, but he's improved a lot as a team defender, improved a lot as like a rotational uh, you know, rotating to the rim, protecting the rim as a weak side shot blocker, weak side rim protector. That's sort of the, 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 the role that they see for him going forward. So they are, I mean, I think they are going to need like a true center at some point in this, in this rebuild and getting that guy, you know, at some point, you know, relatively soon is going to be, you know, a, a, a important step for them to take because, the defense is is going to be really bad pretty much no matter what when when Trey Young is on the floor like he just he can't stop anything it's not even like he's you know even Devin Booker who doesn't try and doesn't really care about defense at least he's big enough to when like somebody runs into him he can stand up for himself and mm-hmm. Trey can't even do that like and it's so it's it's going to be super important that the rest of the guys around Trey Young are capable defenders And if you draft a guy like James Wiseman, and I don't really even know that much about James Wiseman at this point, but like if you draft a rookie center, it's going to take him a few years to get, you know, up to speed with it, with NBA level defense. So I think going for a guy like Drummond, going for a guy who is already established on in the league will sort of help push, help push the Hawks along a little bit uh, faster than drafting somebody. Okay, so that that gets me into a little bit of what I was going to talk about later, but I guess we can talk about it now. So, like, when when was the page supposed to turn on this rebuild, right? Because the team was not expecting to be a well. I don't know if I don't know if internally what their exact expectations were, but you know, proje- they weren't projected to be a playoff team in the Eastern Conference this season. Maybe they weren't projected to be this bad, but they certainly weren't projected to be you know, much higher than this. And so like with the addition of another lottery pick in this year's draft, another young guy, another like 20 year old, like when was the page supposed to turn on this rebuild? I mean, I, I assumed it would center on Trey Young since he's going to be your best player and you'll be, you'd be lucky to get another player as good as Trey Young in this draft. And I think that's unlikely. So was it going to be like year four, year five for Trey? Like when, when were they going to push the acceleration? 
Uh, that's a good question. Uh, I'm not, I know from what Travis Schlenk has said publicly, like he has actually come out and said, we project this team for about like 30 to 31 wins. And he did, okay. he said that a couple months ago after they got off to kind of a, a rocky start with once John Collins went, went out with the suspension and it was clear like this is, you know, this, this season is sort of, you know, going down the tubes really quickly. He actually right. gave, you know had a press conference and said, you know, e- even if everybody was healthy and not suspended, they weren't expecting to win much more than like 31 games by, by their projection. So they knew internally, like this was not the year, you know, there was some, there were some sort of public expectations from, you know, fans and, and some media that thought like maybe they could push into being a 38, 40, 40 win team to try to get into that, that playoff push. But there were no internal expectations that that would be the case. And then when Collins went out with the, with the, the 25 game suspension, it was clear like, okay, this is, this is it. Like we're, they're not, they're not going to the, the playoffs this year. They're not going to make that push this year. The, the issue would be internally would be Trey Young and, and Tony Ressler, the owner. If those guys are sort of talking to each other and talking to everybody else and saying, Hey, we're not happy with how bad we are. Let's make a move those guys have a lot of power within the organization. Obviously wrestler has all of the power in the organization and Trey young as the team star player can certainly influence wrestler to be a little bit more impatient to try to, to try to go for it. I think that's where a lot of this drum and stuff comes from. 